the Flynn Effect. The Flynn Effect was named after James Flynn. He was born in Washington, D.C. in 1934, and he went to school and was educated in Chicago. In 1963, he moved to New Zealand, and he's a professor of political studies there at the University of Otago. He's a leading researcher on human intelligence. The Flynn Effect is a theory which emphasizes the fact that average intelligence quotient or IQ scores have risen over generations. James R. Flynn was the first person to systematically classify the IQ level comparison between successive generations. The Flynn Effect was actually discovered by Richard Flynn in 1977, but it's been named for James Flynn because he was the first to draw attention to the effect. Flynn's research has shown that the average gain in IQ scores is about 0.3 points per year, or about 3 points per decade. In other words, someone scoring in the top 10% 100 years ago, if we normalize their scores to today's test, if they took the test today, they would be in the bottom 5%. The Flynn Effect shows up worldwide, but it's most evident in rapidly developing countries such as India. In fact, in modern and more developed countries such as Sweden and Denmark, they have the smallest gains and appear to have reached a plateau. Research shows that in Denmark, the scores have actually dropped a little bit over the last decade or two. What are the causes of the Flynn Effect? There's a debate over whether genetics or environment is the largest cause for intelligence. Uh, the Flynn effect is occurring too rapidly for genetics to be the cause. One of the reasons for the Flynn effect may be better schooling and test familiarity. In recent generations, people are better educated than they were in the past. Uh, students are taught test-taking skills with the SAT, PSAT, tax test, star test, ACT test, all the testing that we do with our students, it's not surprising that their scores would be higher now. Another reason may be that we live in a more complex and stimulating environment than the, in the past. We have more exposure to visual media through TV or computers, video games, our cell phones. All of this exposure to visual media has led us to be more adept at visual analysis. It appears that we are improving in problem solving as well, and part of the reason may be video games. Uh, video games are more challenging today than they were in the past. You have to think, you have to react to situations, and solve puzzles in a lot of Another effect on or another cause of the Flynn Effect may be nutrition. Uh, improved nutrition over the last several decades has led to increases in body size and brain size. Some believe that brain size and IQ are not related, but recent data shows that there is a correlation between the two. In fact, recent research shows people of East Asian origin, even though they have smaller body sizes, they have larger brains and higher IQs than average whites. Nobody can point out any single cause for the Flynn Effect, but data shows that it definitely exists. More research is needed to answer the question of why the scores are increasing. In the following videos, the Flynn Effect is explained a little bit better, and the first one uh, James Flynn is actually interviewed. like we're having technical difficulties. Let's try again.
This man is a moral philosopher and has long been a civil rights campaigner. Over the last 30 years, he has devoted his life to studying differences in IQ in over 30 countries. His name is James Flynn. What he discovered turned IQ research on its head and became known as the Flynn Effect. All throughout the 20th century, we can trace that each generation is scoring higher than its predecessor. That is, the average person on Ravens today is by definition 100. The average person in 1900 scored against current norms would have been somewhere between 50 and 70. Trawling through huge quantities of raw data, Flynn noticed that IQ scores have risen on average by about three points per decade. He also found that the rise for black Americans was even faster. The IQ gap between blacks and whites was actually closing. Blacks have gained at a faster rate than whites since World War II, certainly. Whites have been gaining something under three-tenths of a point a year, and blacks at about 4.45 points a year. In other words, blacks have been gaining about 50% faster during that period. Now, does that prove that the difference between the two isn't genetic? Well, it certainly shows that differences as great as the IQ gap can be closed environmentally. Flynn's explanation isn't that we're getting smarter or that our ancestors were dumber. The fundamental difference, he says, is that our great-grandparents had learned how to manipulate the world practically. But we've learned how to classify it intellectually. If they were asked to explain the relationship between a dog and a rabbit, they are likely to have said that one chases the other. We're more likely to say they're both mammals. Flynn believes that in the last half century, we have undergone a profound change in the way we think. A change that few of us are even aware of. He calls it the cognitive revolution. Since the end of World War II, our everyday lives have become ever more dominated by the need to think in abstract categories. The explosive growth of science and technology in the workplace, at home and in our schools, requires that we sort our world by conceptualizing it. In essence, we view the world through what Flynn calls scientific spectacles. Now, it so happens that this kind of thinking is exactly what's required to do well in an IQ test. Which means we can give a fairly precise definition of what IQ tests measure. They give a score not for intelligence as such, but for our adaptation to modernity. This is why you get very low IQs in subtropical Africa and even in northern Africa. These are people on the cusp of modernity, and their IQs are just taking off like crazy. And over the next century, we may well see the developing world match the developed world for IQ. I think this next video does a good job of summarizing the Flynn effect and explaining it a little bit better. Today the world is moving at an unprecedented pace. Never before has the planet been so crowded with people running to and fro as Daniel prophesied. Here in America, people spend 100 hours a year just getting to work, and they work four times more than they did just 50 years ago. People around the world are busier than ever, and studies show that our brains are doing a great job keeping up with our schedules. The second part of Daniel's prophecy says that in the end times, knowledge shall increase. The Hebrew word for knowledge here implies perception, skill, discernment, and wisdom. And in this generation, that prophecy is coming true. In the last hundred years, 
Technology has advanced further than in all the previous centuries combined, with satellites and cell phones, air and space travel, and TV and the internet, to name just a few. We've also seen unparalleled advances in medicine, vaccines, antibiotics, and transplants. We've even unlocked the genetic code. Over the past century, scientists and inventors have taken their skills to a whole new level, but they're not the only ones. According to IQ tests, we're all much smarter than we were a hundred years ago. On average, the test scores have increased three points every decade. A phenomenon known as the Flynn effect, named after scientist James Flynn. His study also found that someone who took an IQ test a hundred years ago and scored in the top 10% would rank in the bottom 5% today. The same was true in 20 other countries. And it's not just the students at the bottom of the class who are improving. Flynn's study shows that the smartest 5% of people are getting even smarter. So what's behind the global increase in knowledge? Some say it's because today's children have better nutrition, education, and medical care. Others say the internet and video games are training kids to be better problem solvers. No matter what the reasons are, we're seeing the fulfillment of what Daniel prophesied more than 2,500 years ago. After decades of research, even Flynn himself was puzzled by the steady rise of the human IQ. So here's how he explained it. It's as if some unseen hand is propelling the scores upward. I'm just about out of time. If you go to YouTube and search for the Flynn Effect, there are a lot of really good videos there that might help you.